All right, so in this lab walkthrough, we're actually going to reconfigure our test endpoint host here to use Cisco Umbrella DNS IP addresses. And we will then check Cisco Umbrella to see what sort of information we get from this device once we have done so. So this device is currently configured with a Google DNS. So if we just quickly take a look here, we can see that we have DNS set to 8.8.8.8. .8 so what we want to do is before we actually do that, let's just test to see whether we are protected with Cisco Umbrella. So if we just go to welcome.umbrella.com, we can see there that it's telling us that we're actually not protected with Cisco Umbrella's DNS, so we need to uh, fix that. And it gives you a few things that you can do there. But what we'll do is we'll simply just reconfigure our DNS on this endpoint, and then we will retest that again, open up a few more websites, and then we will see what information we get within Cisco Umbrella. So we'll just come across to our network connection settings here on this test endpoint, and we're just gonna change this to the Umbrella IPv4 settings. So to do that, we're gonna use the IP address of 208-67-222-222. And we'll also specify the second DNS IP as well. Got 220. And then once we've done that, we'll just OK on that, OK on that to save and apply that change. And then if we just try to refresh this again now, we can see voila totally different now we can see that we are protected now with cisco umbrella because we're using the ip addresses of umbrella for our dns queries now so when this machine now sends out dns requests it's going to be using cisco umbrella to do that as well so we've got that dns layer protection now so this is all well and good for one endpoint, but what happens if you've got multiple endpoints? Well, there is management solutions out there that you can use to push out and change configurations as you wish. There is also other options that we will explore later on in this course around using things such as the virtual appliance that comes with Cisco Umbrella as well. So we'll take a look at them a little bit later on. But for now, we'll just focus on this one endpoint and securing this endpoint with Cisco Umbrella for DNS layer protection. So now let's just say we wanted to go to facebook.com. That's going to go off and it's going to do a DNS lookup in the background, return the IP address, send it back to the endpoint, and then we're going to be able to get the result um as to where facebook is and connect to the website as you can see here okay so now with access to cisco umbrella if we just now head to reporting and then let's go to activity search again and we'll just wait for that to load and once it loads up we can actually see in fact if i just filter based on lab network because that's the one that we've configured and if i just filter on that you can actually see now we have some of the dns requests that have come through so we can see in fact the facebook dns request here we can see that it's obviously coming from the external ip address that we have set up and configured we can see the category as well and we can also delve into into that a little bit more if we click on these three um little dots here on the on the right hand side we can actually view in more details here so again we can see the the time and whether this has been allowed we can see the external ip address and as well as the identity which is where the request has come from we can see the destination and we can see category information as well. And we also have the option to dispute that if we don't believe that the ca category is correct as well. We can see that it's a DNS request uh, in terms of A-type record. 
And then if we just, I've got the SecureX banner in, in the way there, but if we just scroll to the bottom, we do have some means of being able to scroll across and to see more information about all these requests here. So if we scroll right to the end here, you can also search or see more information without actually clicking further into that. And then if you wanted to click further into that, obviously you can drill down into that a little bit more. So that's how we can protect our devices, our endpoints with Cisco Umbrella once it's configured. So now we have that protection with our Cisco Umbrella instance and we can apply policies, etc., to control what we are allowed to access in terms of DNS layer protection. That's it for this lab and I'll see you in the next lesson.